students, Mrs. Giro here, your 3D modeling teacher. I just wanted to show my face. My camera works all of a sudden. I know it wasn't working the other day when we had class. What we're going to do this week is we are going to just use basic shapes to create objects of our choice. So I always like things to be creative. I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender right now. And I just remember this little window is going to open up right here and you're just going to click anywhere outside of it. Okay, so this is the default view. When you come in, it's always going to have this little cube there. It's already selected because you can see the yellow line around it. Remember to select in Blender. You don't left click on something, you right click on something. It's going to be a new habit to form. Let's delete this cube by hitting X. X is for delete. Very good. And we are going to add a Suzanne. So let's go to add mesh monkey. Okay. And it added it right in the middle where my cursor was. If you didn't have your cursor in the middle, let's say that you had clicked over here and you accidentally put your cursor over here. When you went to add your monkey, she wasn't at the origin. Remember from geometry, the origin is where the X, Y, and Z axes all meet. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z, Control Z, and let's make sure that your cursor is at the center. So click it somewhere else for now. Just left click anywhere. And let's get it back to the center by holding down Shift S. Shift S, and that brings us to Snap. Okay, S is for Snap. And you're gonna click Cursor to Center. Okay, and now when we go to Add, our monkey, she's gonna show up right there. I'm gonna hit Control Z and show you another way to add. Remember on the left, you have this properties panel. If it's not there, you see a little plus. And remember, this is just one of your MIDI editor windows, right? You've got this window possible. You could change that <laughs> to something else if you wanted to, but right now it's just your info bar okay and I like to keep it my info bar because if it changes uh, everything looks crazy okay this is going to be gosh what is that thing called it's called like a, a a splitter widget okay if you grab that and you go to pull on that I'm just gonna go ahead and do it oh it's not gonna work on me okay I'm gonna grab this one see that little widget over there Whoa, it opens up another window, okay? We kind of talked about this before. So you can actually open up multiple windows, all right? I can grab this right now and I can drag that up and I increase the size of that window and I can grab a hold of this one and slide this one over. Now I have four editor windows and I can change it so they all say 3D view in them. 3D view, 3D view, boom, there they all are. And let's go ahead and put a Suzanne. So I'm gonna click on my plus right here so that I can get back, look at that, so I can get back that properties panel. Maybe I'll just pull that down a little bit more. And the other way to add Suzanne is to click create, okay? So my roundabout way of getting back to showing you another way besides add mesh here is this properties panel over here that remember I had slid away. Click the plus to bring it back, yeah slide it back, click plus, okay? So create tab, create monkey, all right? Notice my cursor's in the center, okay? And all of these. Now, even though there's four different windows, guess what? They all are gonna show me the same Suzanne. Oh, but look at the difference down here. This is pretty fun. This one is showing us the top view, <laughs> these two, and these ones are just showing us um, some perspective view, the default view that you came into. So let's go ahead and um, switch. Can I do that? How do I switch this one so that it is in front view? Oh, cool. I just go front. Okay. And then I can use my scroll to zoom in. Perfect. I'm going to switch this one to the... Whoops, by clicking on view, I'm gonna switch this one to the right ear view. Cool. And I like this one being on top view down here. I'm just gonna click inside of there and I'm gonna scroll in. 
and then I'm gonna click over here on this one and I'm gonna use my shortcut key I'm gonna use uh, let's see how what if I wanted to see the back of her head the shortcut would be control one okay and I'm just gonna scroll in okay so I've got all these different views of Suzanne cool did you know that you could do that why would you want to do that well let's just say that I want to go from object mode to edit mode and I want to I'm gonna click up here so I know that I'm working up here and I'm gonna grab and press down my middle mouse button so I can kind of revolve around and I'm gonna just right click on just that vertex right there that point where all of these edges come together and I'm gonna grab that green arrow and I'm gonna slide it back and so the cool thing that's happening is that I can see the effect that this is having in all of the windows from these different views how cool is that I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that one and pull it back as well now that one doesn't seem to be having the same effect that I was hoping it would because I think I grabbed the wrong axis so I'm going to release and hit control Z and this time I'm going to hopefully get the green one. There we go. That time we got the green one. Okay. So I can look in that bottom right corner and I can see when it is at about the same place. Now look at how it can move so quickly. Hold down shift and that will smooth it out. Holding down shift as I'm dragging. Now it doesn't move so sporadically. That looks good. Yeah, I like that. So um, what about this nose? I'm going to grab this one and bring it around here and I'm going to select that little vertex and I'm going to grab a hold of it over here and I'm going to bring it out. So um, there are all different ways that you can play around and manipulate this. You can also grab an edge. So let's see. I'm going to click over in this view and hold down control to slide it a little bit and I'm going to scroll back just a touch. Hold down my mouse button. And this time I think maybe I can right click. Can I select a whole face? Right now I'm only selecting vertexes. And you know why? Look down here. It's got these three panels. One is vertex select, which is what I was already on originally. The next one is edge select. And then the next one is face select. Cool. I'm gonna put it on face select. I want to actually select that face and it did it. It selected that face for me. I'm going to zoom back a little bit and I'm going to start drawing that up. Cool. Click over here and use my shift and scroll so I can see what it's doing and maybe I'll move him around a little bit more that way. So um, you can go ahead and do that to the other side, select that face and bring it up. So this is a really fun feature. You can select more than one face. So here I am in top view. Let's say I want to select that face. I'm not sure what I'm seeing here. Do, do, do. Maybe I'm going back over. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, but I'm going back over to this one because for some reason that one's not liking it. So I'm going to select it here and I'm going to hold down shift and select here and here and here. And now I have completely grabbed the whole top of Suzanne's head and now I can move it up. Boom. Give that monkey a brain. Okay, so um, the other way that you can select things is this little thing called box select let's see I haven't done box select in a long time I think this is where you like hit the letter B and then just I'm gonna put this in front view real quick I'm gonna click and go one oh, but that's in the so I'm gonna go back view so I'm gonna hit control one okay I want to try to select this whole thing it's an edit mode hmm all right kind of like that in edit mode Okay, well, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna go in box mode and I'm just gonna go like this and see what it selects. Okay, it selected all that. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna go B again and I'm gonna hold shift so it selects this other stuff too. 
B. Okay, it automatically added it. Okay, so I didn't even have to hold B. Cool. So let's see if I just click on, okay, so I've got a little more than what I wanted it to select. How do I get rid of a selection? Okay, I figured it out. So um, I was using um, what, uh, what was called box select in, um, in the K-12 curriculum last year, and I just looked it up on the official Blender site, and it's actually B for border select. So um, right now, I'm gonna have a little issue. I've got this ear selected, but I just realized, haha, I still have this part up here selected. So what you have to remember when you're doing multiple selections is to hit A, to, A is will select everything, A for all, right? But if you hit it again, it deselects everything because if I had that ear and the top, I'm gonna go back control Z a couple times. If I went to go and size the ear, guess what? The head's going with it because I've got that top part selected too. I'm gonna hit control Z. So I'm gonna hit A to deselect everything. And then um, there's a couple of different ways to select multiple things. There's the border select. And border select is gonna work pretty well um, if I have a situation where it's pretty obvious. I'm gonna hit B and you can play around with these and then I'm just gonna hit a border around it. So let's see if it got all of that shape. It might have missed that inside part. Yeah, I think it's missing that one. So how would I add that one in? Oh, it's missing the bottom one too. So I found this really cool thing called the lasso. You're gonna hold down control and just kind of like draw a little circle around whatever it is that you want to be selected on top of it. So I just control and then boom, lasso that little part on there. And that's pretty easy. Um, so I could also lasso that on just holding down control and, and this is where I'm drawing with my left, hold down, there we go, Con using my left mouse button to just kind of draw, whoops, the hardest part about this is making sure that you're in the right view, right, so there we go. Um, you can hold down control and just draw a little circle around the ones that you want selected. Oh, what just happened? Hit Control Z. There we go. It was selected a little bit too much. Holding down Control, drawing my little circle. Might have to zoom in a little bit more. You can do it. Okay, so what happened there? Went wrong. Hit Control Z. Don't forget to use that option that you have. Okay, it looks like all of those are selected right now, and I can hold down Control and get this one. And that one, ooh, I just zoomed inside. How fun is that? That one. Okay, so I'm just holding down control and using my left clicker to just kind of draw a little circle to lasso that particular face. And I am in face select, and that's why that's working. Okay, so it looks like I've got all of those can't tell if that one's selected or not. I'm gonna hold down control just in case. Oh, now for sure it is. Okay, cool. So now I can transform that. Um, and the transformation tools, I might have talked about this last time. This is your transform manipulator, okay? So this first one is to translate. And remember from geography, to translate something just means to slide it. So I've got these different axes I can use. I can grab, this is why if you look at the bottom left, I can pull it out and make a Pinocchio-esque type of thing happen there. Um, I can slide it up, fun. I can uh, slide it to the right, Ooh, to the left, to the right, to the left. Look, I'm animating, uh-oh. Um, okay, and so I'm gonna hit Control Z, and I'm gonna put it back where it started from. Just hit Control Z a few times. And now I wanna show you the rotate. So I can click on that, and notice it gives me this rotational handle. And I can actually grab those handles and rotate it around that way. Oh, that's fun. 
Cool. I'm going to hit Control Z. Um, I can grab this handle and all that just seems to be doing the same thing. Let's see here. Well, I was thinking it would be fun to rotate the um, that one's going a different see it's not doing what I want it to do. I'm gonna hit R again. Well, you can isolate where you rotate it. I want to rotate it around the green, around the Y. So I can just hit the Y and then hopefully, yeah, it's not working. I'm going up here and do it. I'm going to hit Control Z. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hit R and I'm going to hit Y because that seems to be the easiest way to do it. So remember the shortcut for rotating is R and if you hit Y, it will only rotate around the Y axis. So that's spinning and you can hold down shift and cause it to rotate slower, faster. So maybe you want that to be, come on, keep going. Do it again, control Z, R, Y. Okay, and I can flip it upside down if I want to. Okay, the other option that I have is scaling. And so with this, if I just hit the letter S for scale, it's gonna scale all the X, Y, and Z axes at one time so I can give him a really large nose. So that's pretty fun. Or I can scale one whoops, axis at a time. So let's say I just want to scale that one and make it short and stumpy. Okay. Or let's say I want to make it a nice wide beak. <laughs> a thin, wide beak. Kind of like a mustache. Okay. So these are just some ideas I wanted to share with you of how you can transform things, okay? So remember, if you just wanna grab it and move it, if you wanna just transform it, okay? Just like this, the shortcut is G. If I just go G and move my mouse about, about notice that I can grab that and literally move that wherever I want. I can put it as a visor if I wanted to over his head. And I can just flip that around and slide it out that way a little bit. And now, instead of having that crazy nose, he's got a visor <laughs> or some eyebrows that stick out, okay? I can also um, choose to just move it along the X or Y axis or the Z axis when I hit G by let's say I just want to move it up and down the Z axis. So hit G and then Z and then it goes up and down, okay? Or I can go G, X and it will move left and right. I'm gonna right click so it doesn't save those changes. Or I can go G, Y and it'll move forward and backward, okay? And that's where it's kind of cool to be able to see it in the different views in the windows. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on. You can change this to object mode if you want to see how it's going to look in object mode. So um, I just wanted to share just a little bit of the versatility there of how to manipulate your windows to make them work for you. Um, and then, so that's just a little bit of practice. The next thing I'm going to do is teach you how to get rid of all these windows. So let's say I want to kind of, I just want the one window down here again. So I'm going to grab this and when I slide it to the right, you'll notice that there's that arrow. So now that one disappeared and I can change this back to my timeline view. That's where it was before. 
and I'm gonna slide it down. So there's my timeline view again. And if I wanna only have one box up here, I can grab that little splitting widget and I can slide it to the right and you'll notice that now I have an arrow and that's gonna get rid of that. Now I'm back to where I used to be. Woohoo! All right, so does everybody remember how to add color? All right, so that is gonna be over here in your properties. Okay, if you don't have properties, just click on that view menu and change it to properties. And you're going to click on material and you'll have to plus add one, click new, and you can name this material whatever you want. You can name it Suzanne. And you're going to pick the color that you want. So maybe you wanna make her a nice little monkey color. Okay, and um, you can change the intensity of that, how you choose. The specular wasn't showing. I'm just gonna click the drop down box. That's the reflection. So do you want a reflection? If so, what color reflection do you want? I'm kind of liking the pink. And you can change the intensity of the reflection or there can be no reflection, whatever you choose. And then it also is giving you a little preview in this picture as well of what you're creating. So that's color. Um, you can color individual parts, I believe. So let me see if we go, look at those eyes are like jetting into the back of the, I'm gonna see if I can go back to, mm, gotta go to, oops, I just don't wanna try to slide this over a little bit. There we go. I wanna go back into edit mode and I'm going to go back into Vertex Select and I'm gonna right click on both of these so by holding down Shift and I'm gonna slide Suzanne's eyeballs back <laughs> so I can see them. Okay, perfect. And then I think I want to try to select just her eyes. So I'm gonna go into face select and I am going to lasso by holding down control and I'm just gonna draw a circle around what I want to have selected. Okay, and that works pretty well. So I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna do it over here. Lasso, hold down control and just draw. So I've got those selected and now I'm just gonna try and get this over here selected holding down control and kind of drawing a lasso around it. Okay, and hopefully if I look all around, I've got all of the eyes selected. But let's see if I can just change the color of her eyes. So I'm gonna go back over and I'm going to add another one and I'll click new and I'll call it eyes, hit enter. And let's click, let's make some really pretty blue eyes. I really hope that this works. I'm looking at this little preview window over here. It's not exactly the eye color I was going for. There we go. There's some eyes. Okay. And that looks good. I'm going to click assign. So I'm gonna assign that color to that area that I had selected. And let's see, maybe I don't want the eyes sticking out that much. That's pretty cool. And can I go back to vertex select and select the two vertices and change their color? Let's see, I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna call it pupil. Oops, I have to click new before I can name it and double click. Pupil, and I'm gonna go for red. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and I'm gonna have full intensity and I'm not gonna have any specular and I'm going to click assign and I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, 
but um, I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. And yeah, I think you can actually kind of see that a little bit. So I'm going to right click on those again and hold down shift. And this time I'm going to scale. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to hit S and oh, it's not. Oh, that's interesting. It's not actually. Oh, look how fun. <laughs> It's not actually scaling them, but that's okay. I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. So I'm starting to get an interesting feature, and then I'm just going to hit rendered. And then, of course, we can see that my light is not shining in the right place. So I'm going to go back to solid view where I'll be able to see my light. Okay, so the last thing I kind of want to show you is... Um, a little bit with your camera so I'm let's just say this is the view that I want to take it at and if I go over here and view from camera or hit my number pad zero you'll notice that my camera is not really capturing what I want it to capture so I'm gonna hit control Z actually no I'm not um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and view I'll just view front view okay and let's say this is how I want my camera to capture it, this scene right here, get it right where I want to capture of a screenshot of it. And I want to put it in render view. Let's see. Yeah, but I, I, I could just take a screenshot right there. That would work. But let's say I want to actually render it and I want the camera to be in the right spot. So what you can do is make sure you're in solid mode is hit control alt zero. And that is going to fix your camera on your point. Now, if you hit G, Z, Z, mm, there, and scroll. Okay, well, I'm just scrolling right now. Hit, let's see, go over here. Make sure that your camera is selected. Select your camera and hit G, Z, Z, and scroll. And then you'll notice that you can make your scene larger or smaller. Oh, actually, I'm just moving my, I'm not even scrolling. I'm just moving my mouse when I hit GZZ. Okay, and then I can just left click to drop it where I want it. Then I could go up to render and I could just render that really quick. And that will actually save a little screenshot of that. Okay, so... Um, the other thing is your lighting. So I have to go back now. You'll notice that this is changed to, hover my cursor over it, to UV image editor and you want it in 3D view. So whenever you render, you'll have to hit your 3D view. And I'm gonna hit rendered and see, the lighting is fantastic. Um, but if your lighting's not fantastic, go back to solid view and take a look at where your light is at. I actually have a light right here because I added one, but I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete that really quick and I'm going to move that one kind of back because that's where it was before. And I'm going to show you, woo, that's pretty cool. I'm going to hit one. I'm going to show you what that looks like when I go into rendered view. Oh, it's not, I don't know what happened. It's like I added some lights and now all of a sudden they're all just showing up real great. I'm trying, I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, so let's try to render now. Okay, so it's all pitch black dark. I can't see your face. Let's say that happens to you, okay? So um, you're just going to, oops, I'll hit one or the dot. Oh, make sure your Susanna is selected. Select your Susanna and hit the dot on your number pad. Oh, for heaven's sakes, it's supposed to bring it back for you. There, now it worked. Hit the dot and it'll bring it back. So what I need to do is I need to go back into solid mode and I need to make sure that I have a camera. So I'm just gonna, where do I want it? I'm gonna put my cursor right here, or not a camera, but a light. I'm gonna add a lamp and I like the Hemi lamps. And I'm gonna hit R and I'm gonna rotate it so that that beam is pointed towards Suzanne. I could add another lamp if I wanted to. Uh, maybe I wanna add one right there. And I'm gonna add lamp and I'll add a sun lamp this time. Click R and rotate it so that the ray is pointing in the right direction. And now I'm gonna hit numpad zero 
because that's going to take me back to my camera view. And then I am just going to move this back into rendered mode and boom, I've got all this light shining on there. It's perfect and I can render this perfect. Nice. You can take a screenshot of that. And um, I just, the whole purpose of this video is really just to give you some ideas of how you can have more control. I know that it's long. Um, the other thing I want you to be able to do, go back into 3D view, make sure you're in solid mode and object mode, is I want you to um, take control um, of how objects are going to look. So I'm going to hit zero so I'm not in my camera view anymore. So zero gets you into camera view. Okay. And um, let's say I want to change my view. Remember how to, what do I have to hit? Control Alt Zero and that's going to set my camera at that location. Let's say I wanted to have my camera set over here. Control Alt Zero. And then remember if you want to move it around G, Z, Z. And then just, whoops. Make sure your camera selected, sorry. Hit your camera, select your camera. G, Z, Z, and now I can move in and out. I can um, make it so that whatever view I want in my camera, in my camera's view is, is there. Hit zero to go back to camera view. Hit zero to escape your camera view. Okay, so let's say I wanna add some other objects and I just wanna be able to play around with their proportions. Just wanna show you the control panel that you have when you add an object. So I'm just gonna create a plane. Here it is. And you'll notice that over here on the left, you might have to slide it up, is you have some controls before you do anything else with it. And so I'm gonna set my cursor over here. I'm gonna add a plane right here instead so I can see it because my cursor was way over there. And I can grab and just push on my mouse button. I can move it around. I can move it that way. I can move it up and down. Um, over here, I can change the radius of it and I can just expand that as big as I want. Um, I can rotate it from here. But remember this control panel only works during this one time. So let's say I wanna rotate it 90 degree. I can just click that and hit 90 and hit enter. And then that will be perpendicular, right, to that XY plane. Um, so that is one way, but just remember that once you're done with that and I go and click on something else and I go back to it, it's still there. If I, yeah, if I select and do anything else to it, that disappears. So I have one option to use that. I'm just going to hit X and delete that and I'm going to put my cursor right here and I'm going to add a cube. So once again, I have, oh, I accidentally clicked on it. It's gone. So I'm going to hit X and delete that cube. Let's do it again. Add a cube. Oh, look at, oh, there they are. I can change the radius of that cube. I can move it around over here. I can rotate it from here. So let's say I want to rotate that 45 degrees. Boom. Let's say I want to rotate it on that axis 45 degrees. Boom. Let's say I want to rotate it that way 45 degrees. Okay, so this goes away then. Once I hit that, boom, it's gone. You only have that one chance to use that control panel. I'm going to hit X and delete it. And let's say I do that with, uh, I've got an icosphere. And I want to play around with it. I can change the number of subdivisions, make it really smooth. Uh, I can change the size of it from here, the location I can move around. doesn't really matter if I rotate it because it's just a smooth sphere at that point. So that's one way to get a nice smooth sphere. I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete that one. Um, I've got the UV sphere, same thing. I can change, oh, look at what happens. I can change the number of sub, and you're tempted. You're like, oh, I want to see it over there and you want to touch it. But once you do that, um, so play around with those settings and see the different um, ways that you can manipulate these objects and just play with them over here and just see what happens when you move them around. Because remember, once you go in here, that ability to do that, they're gone. Okay, hitting X and deleting that. Let's try the cylinder. So when you get your cylinder, you can um, change the number of vertices on that. Oh, look at you can just turn it into like a triangular, what do you call that, a triangular prism. Um, you can change the radius of it. You can change the depth. You can 
change the location. You can rotate it. So let's hit it 90 degrees. Boom. 90 degrees this way. It's just a bunch of math. That one didn't even make any difference. Let's try 90 degrees this way. Okay, so okay, different ways that you can manipulate those things so that you don't have to do it later. There's a cone. Um, whoops. I'm going to right click on that and hit X to delete it. There's my cone and I already, oops, I blew it. So I'm going to add another cone there. Okay, here we go. Cone. And let's see, I can change the vertices on that. And I can change that. I can change that. I can change that. Okay, location, of course. I can rotate it. So I can rotate that 45 degrees. I could rotate that 30 degrees. I could rotate that 90 degrees. So um, there's all different ways that you can do it. And then, of course, you can always use your G for move, your R for rotate, your S for scale, and just type in the vertex that you want to limit it to. So like if I wanted to rotate this, just around the z-axis that I hit R, Z, and now it's just going to rotate around the z-axis. Or I can hit X, and now it's rotating around the x-axis. Or I can hit Y, and now it's rotating around the y-axis. Awesome shortcuts, okay? Perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop making this. Um, the goal that you're going to have with this, and don't forget the torus, the goal that you have uh, this week is to take all of these awesome shapes, and you're gonna create something, um, whatever you want. Okay, let's see how the donut plays around. Okay, locate. There's gotta be more options to the donut. Okay, we can change the segments. Ooh, we can make that interesting. The radius changes. And okay, so you can have lots of fun. All right, so decide what you're gonna make and you're just gonna fundamentally build something, whatever you want. It could be anything. Have fun with it. Oh, don't forget to save. So file, save as, always save with your first and last name. And you can just call this um, making a whatever. Um, you could make a breakfast scene or you could make a train or you, whoops well whatever <laughs> you could make a I don't even know what happened to it there it is you could make a um what else could you make what's something fun you can make a castle you could make a castle scene so you want to make some objects like trees and stuff like that so I want you to have some fun and just, um, you have an hour every single day for the rest of the week, so just use the three hours that you have after watching this long video to make a cool scene and submit it to the week two discussion forum. Awesome. Thanks.